Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my previous videos. In today's video I'll be sharing with you my favourite colours of 2023. These are the colours that I discovered in 2023 and I fell in love with. So it's going to be a super relaxed video. I am just going to be playing with watercolours. <laughs> so um, the swatching is going to be a little bit different than my previous videos. I'll still be swatching in my Bao Hong sketchbook, but I'll be using this mop brush instead of my usual round brush brushes. And I'll just show you the layout that I prepared for this super relaxing chill video um there we go i have prepared 12 little stumps you might not really see them very clearly on here yet but you'll see as they develop into trees because I will be swatching the colours whilst trying to do foliage on trees. Um, it is just a little exercise I do with uh, the mop brush and I thought why not just turn it into a very spontaneous watercolour video for my 2023 favourites. I have to set things up because they're going to be set up a little bit different than usual and I'll be back and we'll start just letting the mop brush dance on the paper and see what it does. See you in a little bit. I'm back. I've just put everything in a way so that the sketchbook is leaning a little bit towards me so I can see it better and also the watercolour has a little bit of gravity to flow and it's not like flat on the table. Um, just a little disclaimer that the trees that I'm going to be attempting to paint are not going to be detailed. I'm going to treat it as a swatching session and this is just going to be like a playful way to do swatching um, because I, I'm not going to go and then layer on top of the colour to get more shadow and volume on each uh, tree because that would take a long time to do 12 trees. Um, so let's begin. Uh, the first colour that I fell in love with in 2023 was Deep Deep Lights Bent Grass for quite a few reasons. Um, I'll start doing the tree and talk about it. I at first, I, I wasn't really sure about this colour. And the more I used it, the more I fell in love with it. Because um, it has a lot of versatility. When it is diluted highly, it produces this lovely, almost parchment colour. Which I love. As you may have noticed, I kind of have a parchment um, obsession. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see on my layout but um, I just I just loved that it produces so many hues of colour and it's just so understated and neutral and can be mixed beautifully with some colours absolutely some gorgeous pinks with cranberry which I, I use over and over again Cranberry is another colour by Deep Deep Light. So let's begin. I'm going just going to take my mop brush and just play a little bit on the paper. I'm going to let it do its thing. I'm not really interfering, just letting it play. I'm going to mop up some colour from here. And then add a little bit more under here. Just 
just dropping some colour in and see what happens. It's a very quick exercise. Anyone can do this. Just take your mop brush and use the tip when dancing on the paper. The beauty of the mop brush is that it holds so much water. So um, you can basically do a lot of painting without having to re-wet it. There we go. And I'm going to underneath, just take a light wash and add a little bit of water and then a little bit more pigment. I should have blotted the, uh, the brush but hey ho, just let it flow and see what it does. So bent grass was my first pick. I use this colour daily, um, with all seriousness I do, because I love mixing with it, I love using it for backgrounds, like very neutral backgrounds, um, it's a lovely colour. My next colour is another deep deep light colour, which is no surprise because I, I really fell in love with deep deep light colours this year. I. I use the Whispered Season, um, my curated palette with Deep Deep Light every day because I love it so much. Um, and it, the colour I am going to be swatching is in that palette and I love it to bits. It is Pigeon. It's one of my favourite blues. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, well maybe a different shape little bit. I'm going to dilute the, uh, the colour and just let it dance. I call this the, um, the brush dance because that's what you're doing basically. You're just letting the tip touch the, uh, the paper very gently maybe a little bit more over here and I'm going to blot my brush just scoop some up scoop some colour up and then I'm just going to add a little bit more pigment, deeper pigment in some areas Here we go, a little bit more, be underneath here, and again I'm going to just add a wash. Maybe a little bit more water. There's a lot of blotting going on when I'm using this brush because I need to control how much paint goes onto the paper. There we go. My next favourite colour of 2023 is an essay colour. I love essay colours. I fell in love with essay colours as well this year and um, I really fell in love with their Rose Madder Lake Light which is a beautiful beautiful pink and it's as you can see I've noticed that it granulates and I love pinks that granulate. I'm going to dilute that a little bit and let my brush do its thing. My brush has a mind of its own. I'm 
going to do a wider tree this time. I seriously don't feel that I'm actually controlling the brush when I do this. It's such freeing experience, especially because I tend to draw very small um, and very tightly. And this is just, it's just different. It's, uh, it's a joy. It's a joy to do. Just add a little bit there and I'm going to go blot my brush again, washing it. And picking up some of the color because I don't want it to be that red all over or that deep pink, should I say, all over. And then I'm going to just This should have been a little bit more watery for it to have a better effect, but c'est la vie. As Bob Ross says, just a little happy accident. Did you watch Bob Ross? I love Bob Ross. He's such a positive character and full of, you know, very joyful energy when he's painting. Again, light wash. This is so pigmented. I want it to, to be lighter. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water in some areas. Just let the paint do its thing. And Add a little bit of pigment, let it run. Ah, oh, next. Next we have the lovely Indigo by Nila Colori. And boy, oh boy, is this a very intense Indigo. I fell in love with this. I, it hasn't been long since I've swatched it for you because I was swatching the Fonde palette by Nila Colori. And this color just stood out because it was such an intense indigo. It was so beautiful. Um, and I love indigos. I know that there is like, a, there there is like a question about their light fastness and everything, but I don't mind using it in my sketchbook because my sketchbook barely sees the light uh, unless I am uh, filming <laughs> and I'm showing you all. But um, I, you know, I use my sketchbook, I close my sketchbook, so it's not that vulnerable to light. Um, I love this colour. And I'm, oh my goodness, it is just so intense. So intense for a, um, for a, an indigo. I'm going to have to like heavily dilute it. It stained the whole bowl of water there. Okay, so what should we do? Should we do a little bit of a slant here? Let's do a little bit of a slant. Mop brushes are so much fun. I mean, I couldn't do the work I do with mop brushes because, I mean, they, they, they do a detail, but not the, the level of detail that I want. Ooh, I went a bit heavy with there with the paint. Oh well. There we go. I'm going to blot my brush. Let's pick some up. Then I'm going to go in and drop some in again. so it's so black I mean I'm not used to it and I think I'm blotting I'm putting more pigment in than I really really wanted to oh I think I went a bit overboard with that let's just 
add some water and let it do its thing. These little studies are painting themselves basically, not doing much to it. I wanted to leave a few more highlights there, but it doesn't matter really. I that is so pigmented. I really do want to try more Nilla Colori colours. And it crazily intense indigo. Went a bit too straight there, and I don't want that. drop some in there and let it be <laughs> next we have sepia by sa and sepia by sa is the closest color that i've found that is true to the true sepia color it's true to the true sepia color is that does that make sense i hope it does um I love this colour and I, you know, I was so excited when I got to try it. It is in their um, truffle set that they very generously sent me, Inga very generously sent me. I hope you're okay with this very laid back um video today because it's just me playing around with watercolors uh, i'm having a lot of fun <laughs> i must admit okay sepia essay and let's see what shall we do we'll go a bit lower here Yes, let's go a bit lower. Yep. Maybe. Oh, again, too much pigment. These are so pigmented, these colors. It's one of the reason they are my favorites. But because I usually work with a brown brush not this mop brush I'm not very used to it and I can't gauge the uh, the amount of pigment on there correctly I'm going to just add a few dabs of color again like pure pigment as much as I can And then I'm going to add some water and let it do its thing. Let the watercolour and the gravity do its thing. Just dropping some water in there. And again, wash. And some of the pigment. Last on this page, we have Forest by Deep Deep Light. A beautiful, beautiful green, and a green that I use every day, and a green that has spoiled me because for the for those of you who have watched previous videos of me mixing colours, I like to mix my greens. I I I always have mixed my greens, um, so I don't reach for convenience greens usually. But Deep Deep Light have spoiled me. They have made convenience greens that are so realistic that I don't feel the need to actually mix my greens so much. Um, 
this color is oh it's lovely absolutely lovely oh I've just contaminated what my, my next color which I'll scoop up in a bit diluting this as much as I can again very pigmented and I'm going to go a little bit triangular with this Just mop that up. You see the granulation on that. Beautiful. Just can't help but just add a few details because I'm that fidgety even when I'm doing like very loose things fidgety woman um, and I'm going just to add a little bit of that and then I'm going to add some water and let the watercolour dance on the paper a little bit oh look at that how pigmented is that I've just basically just dipped the tip of my brush into that half pan I just let it be I'm not going to fidget with it I'm just going to let the colors be I'm going to take a little break now to actually change my water because it is very um, dirty <laughs> Yeah, courtesy of the mop brush being, you know, holding so much pigment. And I'll be back and we'll move on to the second page. So now I have a clean palette, clean water, and we're going to move on to my next favourite colour of 2023, which is Rose Hip by Deep Deep Light. I, I, I was astounded by this colour. It is a hue that I don't remember coming across ever uh, in my um, many years of using watercolours. I know that I haven't tried many brands, but I just, I fell in love with this colour. And it has an, it leans towards orange. It's a red that leans towards orange. And I'm not particularly fond of orange colours, but I fell in love with this. Um, it is in my Whispered Season curated palette for a reason because I love it. And let's see what our brush does. Okay, so what do we want to do? Maybe go a little bit lower, maybe a little bit slanted. Okay, we're going to go a little bit wider as well. I think we're going to just do a wide, rounded tree. And wash our brush. Mop up some colour.
and then drop some colour in. I'm going to drop some colour here at the bottom and throughout. I think I want some lighter areas, so I'm going to just put some water to let the watercolour do its thing. Underneath, a very light wash. And a bit of pigment. Let it flow. Do you like watching watercolour move on paper? I love it. I love it. And I don't get much of a chance to do that because... Uh, again, my work isn't like that, so when I get the chance, I just <laughs> go a little bit crazy. You see the colour separation already here. The reds and the yellows and the oranges, it's beautiful. Oh, I love watercolour. Um, next, we have Cold Forest by Essay, which I love again. And hence, it's on my best of... 2023. It is this blue violet colour, which I love. Oops, we have splattered. We have splattered over here. Okay, doesn't matter. Gives a bit of an interest to that little piece over there. I've splattered over here as well. What is wrong with me? Okay. So let's do cold forest. I'm going to go wide, I think, on this. And a little bit of a dome. Yeah, that works. Swatching this way is so much fun. I, you know, I'm having tons of fun doing this. Let us pick up some colour. And drop some colour in. I'm going to need more. And then add some colour, add some water, sorry, to it. Just dropping it in, see what it does. That is beautiful. Ah, that colour separation is beautiful. And there we go. Just adding the colour to the wash underneath. Next we have Woodpecker, another convenience green by Deep Deep Light, another green that I love, another green that has spoiled me because, again, I reach for this a lot instead of make, mixing my own greens. I like m mixing this with the forest green for that variegated leaf uh, look. It's a happier green than the forest green. The forest green is quite moody. This is a happier green. Doing a little bit taller, I think. Okay. Oh, 
I like how the the little rose hip drops here look like flowers. <laughs> it's so cute. Happy accidents. And a wash underneath. Add that and go back to this. Just scoop up some colour. The, there's a deeper green in here and it's settling into the values of the paper, which is lovely. Picking up some of that colour, just dropping it in. And going and adding water to see what our colour does. Where would it go? What will it do? Oh, um, next colour is a Roman Schmall colour and this will come as no surprise to you because I've talked about this colour quite a bit in my previous videos. It is Roman Schmall's Potter's Pink. I love Roman Schmall's Potter's Pink. One of the best Potter's Pink I have come across, if not the best. Again, I, you know, I haven't tried that though many brands in my lifetime. I've tried many this year, but not um, in my lifetime, but I love this Potter's Pink. Um, it is just the right color. It does all the right things that a Potter's Pink should do. As it granulates, you know, it has that earthy pink feel to it. What should we do? We're going a bit wild with this one. Yeah, okay. And okay, Potter's Pink. some light wash underneath and a bit more colour dropping some colour in there and then dropping some water I'm going to have to wait for these to dry completely <laughs> before I close the book because it's going to make a mess. It's so watery. Um, next is another essay colour. It is Fossil Grey. Um, I am partial to greys and this is one of my favourite ones. It is a very light grey. So I don't know how it's going to look as a tree, to be honest. But if you don't experiment, you don't find it. So let's try do it's almost like a ghost tree. To do it a little bit wider on the bottom. Yeah, like that. And scoop up some colour. Add some pigment. And then some water and see what it does. Oh, I forgot to put the extra pigment underneath there, so I'm going to do another wash. 
and add that underneath. I'm almost forgetting that I'm actually videoing this. I'm having so much fun. It's just like opening my sketchbook and having a fun day in the sketchbook, which is brilliant. I just hope that you're enjoying it too. And my last colour, my last favourite colour of 2023 is Moroloni by essay I love this color it has so much character it has tons and tons of character it's got that very dramatic uh, granulation and there's color separation in it it's it's really really interesting color oh, I'm gonna have to make some room here to do that last color I'm, I suspect I'm going to need to really dilute this. You can see already the um, the granulation there. I'm going to go really wide with this. It's like a a a, um, a tree that's got a very had a very bad hair day. <laughs> so wide. And crazy. Um okay, so we're gonna just add some more pigment in there. Need a bit more. Then I'm going to go and add some water, let it run. And Color separation, how dramatic is that? What a drama queen of a color. It's crazy. It is such insane separation. I love this color so much. Okay, so there we have it. Those are the colors I chose for 2023. These are the colors that stood out to me after I uh, swatch them on video for you. I continued using them since I've discovered them because I love them. Um, let's just bring everything into focus. Everything is still very wet so I have to be careful. So these are our trees and these are the colours that I fell in love with in 2023. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit of a crazy video. Um, <laughs> just me indulging in um, letting my brush do all the work, dancing on the paper and just celebrating watercolour very spontaneously. Um, it was such a joy to film. I had so much fun. I do hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank you so much for being being with me in 2023 through this year and through all the difficulties I've had this year you have supplied me with so much joy this channel has supplied me with so much joy um, creating um, swatches uh, discovering new watercolors it's been like a dream come true it's it really, it really has. I feel very, very grateful and very, very privileged to have tried so many beautiful colours in 2023, meeting so many beautiful people through the channel. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that 
we are going to continue doing this um, and I hope that you will in continue enjoying the videos um, that I create. I want to wish you all a wonderful 2024, a peaceful, a joyful, a, hel a healthy 2024. Um, so yeah. I'm going to leave you here with these crazy trees in the background <laughs> and um, I can't wait to see you in 2024 again. Bye bye for now. Bye. Bye.